We're live, dude. Yes, we are. Thank you for turn, tuning in. My name is Jim Bachman with the Brewers Association of Maryland. I am joined by Nick with Full Tilt Brewing in Baltimore and with Brendan and ba Bailey O'Leary from True Respite in Rockville. Uh, we're going to be enjoying some great beers from them today uh, on this virtual tasting. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to everybody who will be joining us on this uh, virtual tasting this afternoon. And thank you for your support of Maryland Beer. Everybody knows that right now is kind of a uh, crazy and hectic time for small businesses throughout the state. And uh, the Maryland uh, brewers really appreciate all of the support that's been coming from everyone. And I'm sure uh, both uh, sets of our guests will be talking about that. Um, in the meantime, I would like to let you know as we go into the weekend that as of right now, you can still support Maryland breweries by visiting their tasting rooms for pickup of beer. Uh, many of our breweries are offering delivery services, so do not hesitate to support Maryland beer when you are uh, making those short trips between essential uh, pickups and make sure that beer is on the top of your list. We also uh, have uh, both of our guests today have their beer out available in the trade at local retailers. So please support them there if you see their brands uh, while we're there. Right now, I know that we've got four beers coming from Full Tilt and three beers coming from True Respite. I'm going to add a couple of things in the comments throughout this whole thing. It'll have some tasting notes, links to their breweries, uh, and we'll have some links for uh, some specific things that Brendan and Bailey will be sharing with us. Uh, including a really cool platform that you can order beer for delivery or pickup called Beer Me. So without much further ado, I'm going to hand it off to Nick and let him get started, uh, only because they said yes first. And then when we uh, finish with Nick, I'll interject and we'll cut over to uh, Brendan and Bailey. For you watching, if you have any questions at all about Maryland beer, about the specific beers that we're talking about, please feel free to throw your questions in the comments and we will ask them and answer them. Um, let's have a good time and thank you very much. Brendan Bailey, I'm gonna throw you guys on mute. If you need anything, just wave and I'll uh, get you. Are we, we on me now? Party's you, brother. All right, well, hey, uh, hey everybody. I'm Nick from Full Tilt. Um, thanks to Jim uh, for having me on. And and good to see the guys over at True Respite joining us. Um, they've, uh, they're going to probably dive into it a bunch more, but they, uh, they put an app together um, prior to all this and kind of for themselves, but when everything kind of hit the, hit the fan, really shared it with the rest of the uh, local community um, and is really helping everybody. Uh, we're talking about Beer Me, the Beer Me app, um, and that, that's what we're using to deliver. Um, we also do carry out, we have an app called uh, Craft Seller, um, now, you can come in and just order beer without getting on that app. I guess kind of what one of the benefits of the Craft Seller app is we, we can put beer up for a free store. Um, so we've been using that a little bit. That's a newer app, so we're kind of toying with that. Um, but, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll do a quick. Well, actually, you know what? I'll crack open a raspberry wheat real quick. Um, it's one of our staples. It's the time of year where, um, uh, where this, you know, starts being the, the beer to go to. It's, it's, it's light. It's refreshing. We actually just canned this on Monday. Um, so I'll kind of jump in and out of who we are as Full Tilt. Um, so Dan and I are the two owners. We've, uh, we started it a little over seven years ago and, uh, we started as craft or I'm sorry, contract brewers out of Peabody Heights. Um, we were always kind of looking for our, our own location. Um, you know, we still work our full-time jobs because craft or contract brewery, it was, it was great to get into the industry, but it, it really, the, the business model, the margins that you make off that it's, you know, it's, it's it's not, you're not, nobody's getting rich off that. Not that we are here either. We're barely paying our bills, especially these days, but uh, it's really kind of to get, it was a way to get into the industry, uh, figure out our beer, and then until we got our own location to really kind of blow it up. And so here we are now um, in, on uh, York Road, 5604 York Road, just south, south of the Senator Theater in the Homeland neighborhood of uh, Baltimore City. Um, 15 barrel brew house, a couple of 30 barrel tanks, a couple 15 barrel tanks and uh, Jordan McGraw is our head brewer. Um, we had started with somebody else, um, kind of made the switch to Jordan a few months back and uh, are extremely happy with the product he's putting out. Um, if, if you didn't know uh, by name, he actually just came from Hysteria um, before then and was putting out some good stuff with those guys. But uh, we're still um, you know good terms with those guys. But uh, in the meantime, um, raspberry wheat, 
this is a again it's a it's a real sessionable smooth raspberry beer it looks you know nice and red but the the fruit isn't overwhelming it's just, it's still a nice subtle um a flavor to it and it's very drinkable um the the aroma is actually more potent than the taste is um but we think it's it's it was the second beer we ever came out with Baltimore pale ale was the first raspberry wheat was the second and it's been one of our crowd favorites ever since and we like to bring it out every year at this time and and throw some back when the weather's warm let's hope uh turns around soon and this rain goes away Oh, there, there she is. That was the, uh, yeah, we came out with bottles originally, but now we um, we switched the cans a couple years back to Peabody, and uh, we were actually doing noble canning a little bit, um, but recently, a couple months ago, just got our own canning line. Um, so now these these beers that we're going to see today were all canned um, with our own line. Actually, a couple of them were with the mobile canner. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's it. I, I guess that's it for my first beer. Um, if you want to switch over to True Respite, is that how we're, we're doing, going back and forth here? Whatever works best for you. I mean, I'm happy to let you guys run with what you've got, or if you want to go back and forth, that'd be great. Whatever, whatever works best for you guys. Well, what do you I think, think, uh, think True Respite? Yeah. Talk about True Respite and some beer, and yeah, it might be nice to uh, pop back and forth and crack a beer uh, one after the other. Let's do it like that then. I like this. It's like a machine gun setup. It's great. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, well. We're Brendan and Bailey O'Leary. Um, we are two of the three co-founders of True Respite Brewing Company. We're out here in Rockville um, in Montgomery County. Um, our third co-founder is Kenny Allen. He's the brewmaster here, uh, formerly brewmaster at Old Ox Brewing Company, at um, uh, Mustang Sally Brewing Company, and at- uh, Old Dominion. Old Dominion, thank Dominion. you. That's they one were I was in looking Ashburn for. before they merged with Fordham and before that went down. Um, Actually, while that went down, he was the brewmaster at Old Dominion during the acquisition by Fordham and ABI. So he oversaw that whole process. He also worked for a while at um, Nestle learning lean manufacturing. And uh, that is uh, some some expertise that he brings into the business here. So um, I am Brendan. I run uh, sales and distribution. I also do some marketing for the business, we kind of share that. Whoever's doing something cool today gets to talk about it. That's generally how we run the marketing side of our business. Um, you want to talk about your experience? Um, I'm Bailey, and I I started out really managing the retail side of the business, and I now have been given or have taken the title of head of business operations. So I just go with that. Um, it's a lot more than just retail side now. Um, a whole lot of everything. HR, accounting, finance. She does all the stuff. Her constant line is that she does all the things no one else wants to do. <laughs> oh, that's kind of true. Which is that's mostly true. Yeah. I, from, like, <laughs> I was going to do retail and events and focus on kind of that side of the business and then realize there's a lot of stuff that nobody's doing. So I kind of picked up a lot of those and hence came the title head of business operations. <laughs> so that's kind of, that's kind of how we do what we do. Kind of a separation of what we what we work on. So I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. We have a 50, we have two brew houses really. We have a 15 barrel brew house that is our production brew house. We also have a three and a half barrel pilot system that we use for some experimental and small batch stuff. Um, we've got a bunch of 30 barrel tanks, 15 barrel tank, a couple sevens and a couple fours. And so that diversity in tank size uh, makes us really flexible with um, being able to do some fun stuff and uh, we also like to crank some big volumes for production. Um, we specialize in not specializing. So we do a lot of hazy IPAs. Those are easily our, our, our most popular styles. But um, I mean, we have an Irish red out right now. We have a vanilla porter. We have a dry hop pilsner. Um, we've got a Belgian double. Um, we've got beers all over the map that are out right now. So while I would say hazies and uh, lately sours have been things that people have enjoyed from us, we love keeping a nice diverse list and we draw from Kenny's experience bring a lot of traditional styles to keep those traditions alive. Yeah, and I, just to add to what Brendan said, our mission statement said specifically that our mission was to brew a diverse array of the highest quality beers. So we never wanted to pigeonhole ourselves into one style or another, we wanted to brew a diverse array of different styles. So that's been our mission from the beginning. That mission statement does say that we intend to keep up with current trends, but that doesn't mean defining ourselves by current trends. And so that's how we approach our, our beer lineup and what how we what beers we brew and when we brew. So 
that being a long-winded introduction, let's drink some beer. <laughs> we can start probably with our Fox. This is a, a Keller Pills dry hopped with hops that I have a hard time pronouncing because I'm going to let Brennan say them. Yarlow and Kazbek hops. So these are kind of not your juicy, fruity, modern, tropical hops. Instead, these definitely have more of like a, a noble heritage. Um, I get definitely some like peppery spice. I get some floral notes. Um, so I, I, maybe even a little earthy. Uh, and there's definitely like a tangerine element, but this is a very complex, diverse, um, assertive hop profile that comes from uh, the, the hops. And you're not, we dry hopped, um, so we're not pulling a lot of bitterness. Instead, we're really just pulling a lot of those uh, other flavor notes that I was talking about without the bitterness. And you get a nice crisp um, Pilsner that uh, I think is very expressive. There you go. There's the Fox can right there. So the artist who did the label here, cheers. Uh, the artist who did the label, her name is Ashley Hauk. Um, she's a new artist in our fold. We love to use local artists who live in the area um, up and down the 270 corridor um, to do our labels. So we have artists from Rockville to Frederick. Um, we have four different artists who are doing our labels. Ashley is, is uh, one, she is excellent at doing nature art. So she um, started a company called Spicy Mustard Designs and um, she custom did this box label for us. And uh, she, you should definitely check out Spicy Mustard Designs anyway to see some of the other spectacular art she's done. Yeah, we met her because she was a vendor at one of our artist fairs and we saw her artwork and we're like, have you thought about doing beer labels? Because we want your art on our beer labels. So uh, the little guys have joined us. We have our son, Aiden, who's five, our daughter, Ashlyn, who's three. Daycare is closed and we uh, never stop being parents. So here they are. <laughs> they join in the conversation here. Appreciate your patience. <laughs> a lot of people don't realize brewing is a family business. We were actually just having that conversation before we all went live. So it's great to see the family is all involved. Yeah. Aiden hopes he can be our fridge stalker forever. That's what he told us. So, um, with that, Nick, we'll turn it back over to you, my man. It's time for beer number two, I think. All right. Hey, am I back on now? You are, man. All right. I'm still figuring this out. I haven't really done one of these before. Um, so Can I interrupt real quick? We do have a question from Nikki. She's wondering whether or not uh, Aiden is forklift certified yet. No. <laughs> no, Nikki. Thank you for your question. <laughs> are we back on me now? All yes. you can. All right, I, I'm a rookie at this. I'm still figuring it out. Uh, so yeah, with um, one of the uh, and really showed me up over there with the, the introduction of the uh, the artists and the props that you gave. That that was pretty awesome. Um, one of the guys we use, we, we've been toying with different artists as well. Um, it's actually so it takes me back to um, our um, well, yeah, he's on the wall up there. Our hops of cat beer. It's been our bestseller. It's an IPA. Um, been our bestseller for about four years now since we launched it. And almost to the day. Um, um, anyway, because it was our best-selling beer, we started having fun with it, and we started a whole Hopsy Cat comic book series around his adventures. And uh, we're up to, I believe, episode seven at this point. Um, in a couple months now, we're going to be coming out with Claws and Effect, which would be, uh, uh, well, sorry, volume eight. Um, so we have the artwork for that, and we're actually starting to do. We'll get to this taste in a second, but while I'm talking about the um, the design series. We're doing some offshoots. This one in particular is called Cat's Pajamas. So that's Hops of Cat. He's just, uh, we, we, call, we call him off, uh, off duty, kind of lounging around on his couch, um, enjoying a Hops of Cat actually there. But uh, yeah, so um, Hops of Cat, that's, yeah, that, that's a whole comic book series now. But in the meantime, we work with another guy uh, over at Label Guru, and he does some things. Uh, so our cans that look like this all come over a website called Label Guru. There's this one, you can see the Berliner. Um, that's the only two here, but uh, he does uh, some pretty nice stuff for us too. And this one in particular that we're going to taste right now is our Go Banana Hefeweizen. So uh, if, if, you're, uh, if anybody out there are Simpsons fans, you might recognize the scene where uh, on the bus where uh, it says Go Apple, Go Orange, and then of course Ralphie throws out the banana, it doesn't go anywhere. 
But uh, so ch- try to check that on YouTube. It's a pretty funny scene there. But uh, I might as well crack it open and try it. Um, it's a very, very banana forward uh, Hefeweizen. It, uh, it drinks pretty thick. It, it was a 15 barrel batch that sat on uh, 100 pounds of banana. So the banana is very prevalent, very forward on both the aroma and the taste. And actually, so I haven't had this in a few days. It's actually mellowing out very nicely too. Um, I like how I liked the banana up front like it was before, but I think it's actually getting even more balanced over the past few days. Mm. Yeah, so that's uh, that's getting pretty good if you like that style of beer. Uh, I wanted to do our two fruit beers first and kind of work our way towards the IPA. We'll do the stout next, and then we'll do our brand new IPA we just uh, launched a couple of days ago on, on Tuesday. Um, but I guess in the meantime, while I'm sipping on this, um, you know, I, di- I guess I wanted to talk about uh, some of the things um, that we're doing with the neighborhood. You know, I, I guess more what the neighborhood's doing for us. Um, it's been overwhelming. You know, the, the first couple of days this started happening, I actually, my wife and I actually were, uh, I can't remember the date now, but it was a couple of weeks ago, we were down in Asheville, North Carolina, just for a personal trip and uh, going to the Biltmore and just kind of hanging out and everything down there seemed normal, but it seemed like it was about the time when the world started losing their mind. And, uh, you know, I figured not, not a big deal. Um, but then it, it, started be, it started getting real when on the Sunday of our flight back, we went to um, Sierra Nevada because it's right next to the airport down there and they were actually closed down. I was like, man, this is kind of a big deal here. And then I get back and, and it was that next day that uh, businesses started closing, uh, closing the doors and, and it got real, pretty real pretty quick. Um, but the neighborhood around here, um, the, again, the Homeland um, neighborhood has been extremely supportive. The next day, I mean, it was almost as if, you know, we were open as, as you know, as many people as we could safely come had had in here, you know, they were, they were coming in here buying up beer and it, and it really helps us because we do have all this beer in these tanks that we still want to process through. And uh, unlike the two respite guys that, I mean, they're, they're, Fermenter break, breakdown is that's that's genius. Not only just for now, but in general, it's popping out different stuff, and we're looking at that as well. Getting a couple of smaller, like seven uh, barrel fermenters, but in the meantime, uh, we're pushing through the liquid we have. Um, we're uh, doing a couple things where, like the hops of cat. We'll go back to that real quick. Hops cat. We are actually going to be splitting up between the normal batch, and we're actually going to be dropping half the batch on uh, grapefruit pu- uh, puree, and we're going to have a different label for that. So it's another way to split a beer and kind of make it different, a different beer um, with different labels, but uh, you know, able to, so it, it helps us move it a little, a little bit more when our demand is going through the floor uh, lower. Um, but uh, that's man, that's a depressing end. I was going to transfer over, but I, I feel like I should say something positive right now. Um, I don't know. I guess I, I guess I'm a little excited. Um, I want to say a quick thanks to our landlord, and I guess put it out there that it's not all doom and gloom. For us, um, our lenders right now are deferring payments. We found out this morning that our landlord is also doing the same. And, it's, and it goes back, I guess, to the community really helping us out and, and pushing for us to, to make it through this whole mess so that we can keep making beer and have a, a, probably, I would assume and I hope, an amazing kick-ass party when we, when we open back up. Uh, so we're looking forward to that day for sure. But in the meantime, go banana half of and check it out. I did share a link to the YouTube video in the comments so people can take a look at that. Um, okay. Brendan and I recently had the chance to uh, go on to the Uncapped podcast together, and we were talking a lot about how Maryland breweries make big impacts on the communities that they're in. And uh, it's great hearing from uh, you, and I heard it from uh, Judy last week when we had her on, and I imagine we're going to hear similar things from Brendan and Bailey. Just the community is there to support Maryland breweries, you guys are a staple business in a lot of these people's uh, neighborhoods. And it's, it's, it's great to see that the outpouring is to ensure that you guys are around when everybody can go back and do normal things. Um, we have a planted question from your business partner there, Nick. He would like to know why your handwriting is worse later in the night when you write checks. Oh man, yeah, he told me that out. It's, it's particularly on the days where we have a few bins in a row, and he, he, he called me out. He go through and get our taxes ready and all that. So that on the day that we have three or four bins, each, each successive check a little bit than, than the one before. I don't know. I think it's coincidence. I don't know what he's talking about. 
All right. Well, I'm glad that I'm glad that he was able to uh, put you on blast in front of everyone. <laughs> All right. Let's kick it over to Brendan and Bailey. Which uh, beer are you guys going to talk about next? Well, the next beer we're going to talk about is Do It For The Smile. It's a vanilla porter. Um, and we named this one Do It For The Smiles. If am I allowed to say exactly what it was? Yeah, screw it. It's, um, you may be able to tell if you're familiar with the brand, but it's named at, for trips that we used to take to Menchie's for frozen yogurt. Um, when we lived in Denver, there was a Menchie's like right by our house. And that was kind of our little escape. Like if we ever had a stressful day or, you know, if something didn't go well and we just needed to get away for a minute, we'd go to Menchie's and their rewards program, they give you smiles. And that was always so exciting. You go and they're like, you just earned 50 smiles. And it just, it always feels good. Like if you're in a bad mood, you just go and earn smiles. And how could you possibly be in a bad mood after that? Bailey is like not a big sweets person. So when I'm like, yeah, I need some ice cream. I'm like, Bailey, we got to do it for the smiles. And she was always like, oh, you're totally right. We got to do it for the smiles. So it really became like a, a, a catchphrase for us saying like, let's take a break. Let's take a moment. Let's just get out there and enjoy ourselves for a minute. If that means just sitting and having some froyo together, then so be it. Right. So that's where that's where the idea came from. Um, so I'll go ahead and crack it. We used light chocolate malt in this beer to give it kind of a milk chocolate character. Okay. I think I'm a little more heavy handed than you do. Here we go. So go ahead, you were saying. It's, we use the light chocolate malt to give it more of a milk chocolate character to make it more candy-like almost. And the vanilla is pretty pronounced. We did that on purpose. We don't want to make anyone guess whether or not there's vanilla in the beer. There's vanilla in the beer. Of lactose. I mean, the beer is vanilla Froyo inspired. So, you know, we wanted some of that creaminess. We wanted to give that vanilla cream uh, spirit to it. But like Bailey said, we also brewed it with light chocolate malt for some milk chocolate character. So there's no question that what you're drinking is a porter. Uh, it just happens to have some vanilla lactose in it as well. So um, it's ice cream inspired more than like an ice cream clone, if that makes sense. Um, I'm not a big fan of really thick, cloyingly sweet beers. I know that that's a trend in beer right now. We just have not adopted it because the hell with it to be honest with you <laughs> so um this is a classic vanilla porter with just a little bit of that uh sweet creamy vanilla character um it's it has i mean aged beautifully at this point let's see the cans went in so this was like new year's basically where um, we put these in cans it's like three months old now and i swear the beer is coming into its own right now you know a six percent nice dark beer um it is hitting its stride i absolutely adore this beer um, and like Bailey mentioned it holds kind of like a, a special place for us emotionally because this was something that um, was near and dear to us personally before we started our beer journey here so this was it was meant to be a one-off beer we did last year and it turned out to be really popular and people asked for us to bring it back and we were like yeah we'll bring it back we'll put it in cans this year and that's what we did to mention that I'm very artist. fortunate that I have you guys all on today because last night I actually had Hops the Cat and Do It For The Smiles. Nice. And, uh, it's very nice that we've had both of those come up in the conversation, but Brent and I agree with you 100%. This beer is definitely in its stride right now. It's delicious. Uh, great job. And Nick, you'd be very happy to know that the Hops the Cat I had was very fresh and it was delicious as well. So you guys are killing it out there, making sure that everything's getting where it needs to be fresh and delicious. I uh, love well, to hear you. that. Thank sure. you. Yeah, that's Thank awesome. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the can art. Jim, did you have that to pull it back up? Yes, he's nodding. Let's see if we can snag that. So um, Do It For The Smiles is art created by um, Diana Michelli. She goes by Designer Squirrel. She was our first label artist outside of uh, the firm who did our overall brand design. So um, Kendrick Kidd created the True Respite logo. He designed the keyhole and we came up with the keyhole concept, but he brought all of it to life. He created all of our logos, all of our crests, our icons, whatnot. And then he did, um, yes, the keyhole like on Bailey's hat. Uh, and then he did uh, our week away and scrum and hooker cans as well. 
but because those are core beers, obviously they haven't changed. Um, and, and like I mentioned, we specialize in not specializing. So we do tons of one-off beers and that requires us to have a constant influx of new art from artists. We were putting out beers so quickly that our artists were getting overwhelmed and we've had to continually add new artists in the fold just to make sure that they have enough bandwidth to get all the art done for the labels um, that we're releasing. So this is Diana Michelli. She was the first that we brought in. She lives right here in Rockville. Um, she works in IT during the day and she moonlights as a, a beer label artist, which is completely unfathomable for me, um, considering some of the incredible iconic art that she's done for our brand. So. Um, she has done most of our early cans. Some of you may remember the art from You Looked. Um, obviously, she did do it for the Smiles, um, Punch Buggy. She specializes in a lot of very vibrant colors, and she's incredibly good using geometric shapes and, and lines and color to kind of tell a story, even if it's almost abstract. And that's exactly what she did here with Do It For The Smiles. And she creates all of her own custom font, too, for all of the art that we're doing. So she is very, very talented, um, or mostly custom font. I guess every once in a while she'll use a stock font, but she mostly does custom uh, letter work too for all the labels. So she's extremely talented. She has brought our brand to life in ways that I never imagined and we're extremely appreciative of her as well. That's and, awesome. That's a really, uh, really neat thing to be able to find somebody who's moonlighting and is able to bring that kind of talent to the table. It's incredible. Sure. One comment I have. Yeah. about all of your labels is i love the keyhole making the appearance in the same space on the label for everything that consistency is just very cool to see yeah we have a template that we've given to our artists and then it's a blank canvas outside of a few key elements and so then they have the opportunity to really showcase themselves and we actually have a beer coming up we're starting an artist series where we're showcasing our artists and letting them promote their own art studio on our labels just because they've been so influential and our customers enjoying our brand that we feel like it's time to give back to them. So you'll see a beer coming up shortly called Squirrel Hops. Uh, and that's an IPA that features Diana. Um, she made her own custom beer and she named it Squirrel Hops. And so we'll have Diana's um, designer squirrel, Squirrel Hops IPA coming out, I think next week. Very cool. Nick, you ready to rock and roll with the next one? Absolutely. Yeah, we touched on this a little bit, uh, but I want to dive into it now with the uh, the tasting and a little bit more about the artists. It seems like uh, to respite's approach is, is very similar to what we're doing. We're, we're a little behind on it too. Um, you know, when we were contract brewing, we were brewing so much liquid because Peabody's tanks are big um, that uh, we weren't really able to experiment. So now we're popping popping out beers left and right because we have smaller tanks and smaller brewing system and it's uh, we're learning how to keep up with new labels and designs so we're doing the same kind of thing um, where we're using different artists but this one in particular um, we're starting to use a little bit more and more uh, Philip Pilgrim uh, his um, Instagram is art and a art and ale um, he's uh, he's doing some fun stuff too and it's 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 just like they said where we kind of keep them within a template and uh, then our artists, our graphic artists who designed all of our original beers and a lot of our, or really all of our core brands like the raspberry wheat and the pale ale, they'll slap on the borders and the UPC and the government warning and all that, that boring stuff. But uh, yeah, so yeah, you, you see there you got uh, the Hopsa Cat kicking back um, and that's Lorenzo on the milk carton. That's his arch nemesis. Um, now there is a typo on here, which I'm pretty annoyed by. And uh, if we come out with this beer again, we got to fix it. But if you, this is a, um, a quote from a little while back, but you can see I got uh, at, the, at the very end there, Hops or Cat, I have nipples. George, could you milk me? Um, that was actually, we were in between taproom managers, um, general managers, and uh, George was the previous one. He moved on to a bar down in Canton, um, and uh, Marshall from uh, um, a couple different places, but the Peabody and Chomsky to me first came on next, but up. Uh, Anyway, um, not to get too much into that, um, but uh, yeah, I want to go back to Phil, uh, Philip Pilgrim real quick. He's actually doing some other things, fun things with us right now too. Um, I'll get into that one a little bit later because we're going to taste that last, the East Coast and West Coast. But uh, since Dan made fun of me a little bit earlier, I want to I want to throw it back at Dan. So he, uh, while I pour this one out, we'll talk about this in a second. But uh, Dan is uh, kind of particular in setting his ways with with certain things and doesn't doesn't you know, truly love or 
like even or enjoy at all sour beers and a, and a couple other things spice beers and and there, there's a few there's a list um so we're having some fun with them and uh coming out with dan's jams uh, soon and it's another way this is another beer where we're we're brewing a bunch of it and splitting it up so we're actually going to come out with four beers fruited differently off the off the sour base beer um jordan actually started working on this one today um it's going to sit over the weekend and sour um and then in a couple of weeks we'll have we'll have four sour beers from one batch but it's uh again it's gonna be called dan's jams and uh, he's going to be kicking back in, in his bed wearing a Pearl Jam shirt because it's his favorite band in the world. I think it's literally the only band he listens to, um, but surrounded by fruit and dreams. And it's, it's going to be pretty funny and a fun label. Um, but in the meantime, uh, Captain Jam is here. It's just a dark milk stout, um, super smooth, super milk chocolatey. It's just it's anything you want from a milk stout. It's nothing that's going to... Um, it's, I, I wouldn't. I don't know how to say it. It's it's just a milk stout. It's a, it's a good milk stout. If you want a dark beer, if you want a milk stout, it's, it's just what it is. It's it's not trying to be something different. It's not fruited or spiced or anything. It's just a really solid milk stout with a kind of funny label. So uh, yeah, that's that's that one. We did not cue those up intentionally to have the uh, the porter and the stout side by side, but the description <laughs> of cat's pajamas that was sent to me earlier is a great one. Chocolate dipped in vanilla, dipped in chocolate. So. Yeah, like yeah that. that's, that's pretty much it. That sums it up. Yeah. All right. I, can I, I guess that's kind of all I have for now. Cool. Yeah. All right. Are we on to Dad Hat from True Respite now? We are on to Dad Hat. I think I would like to talk about this one if that's cool. I'll let you talk about it. So, this is Dad Hat. Uh, Nick mentioned Philip Pilgrim, the label artist. We actually use him too. And I know he does some labels for um, Saints Row down the street from us in Rockville as well. So uh, Philip is starting to get his name out there. He is getting known because he is an excellent artist. Um, yeah, his work for Saints Row was the first of, of his labels that we had seen. And we were like, who did that? That's awesome. We want to talk to them. Who's that? Must have that person doing labels for me too. So, um, this one to me, the art has a very Rugrats feel, which is hilarious. Um, that was totally not intentional, but Philip just did his thing. And I was like, dude, this is so Rugrats. And he was like, yeah, it totally is. Um, <laughs> let me tell you a little bit about the beer. So this is a hazy IPA. Um, up until recently, I had been picking all of our hop combinations for our IPAs. And um, the business was going in a million different directions. And I was feeling like I was spending a lot of time on things that maybe shouldn't have been under my pur purview. At the same time, I think Kenny, our brewer, was feeling like I was dipping my toes a little too deep in his water. So we mutually agreed that uh, he was going to take over the hop selections. And I was picturing, I was picking hops that are like interesting and cutting edge and new and modern and fruity and juicy and this and that. Uh, like Brew One and Cashmere and... Brendan's like on all the blogs trying to find like the next thing that people are talking about. What's the new hop? Like investing a lot of time in that. I love that stuff. It's really cool to me. I love I love the massive influence that a single hop varietal change has on the outcome of a beer. So that's a place where I spent a lot of my time. And eventually it was like, all right, Kenny's going to take over hop selections. And I was like, that's fine. We've made enough IPAs at this point where he's totally like in line with how we are doing things and he gets it. And his, the first hops he picks are Centennial Warrior and Citra. And I was like, you, you've got to be kidding me. Like, are, are, we brew, are we brewing 2008, the IPA? Like, what are we trying to do here? And uh, Kenny was like, trust me, it's going to be delicious. And I'm like, this is going to be a disaster. I'm going to name it something that is going to let everyone know this hop is for old people who like IPAs of yore. And so we're going to call it dad hat and theme it after like, you know, your middle-aged elder, middle-aged father's wardrobe. And that's where we're going to go with this. And Kenny was just like, you do what you need to do. The beer is going to be amazing. Don't worry about it. Beer comes out. I took my first sip and I was like, holy shit. He was right. This is phenomenal. Like the juice, the, um, it's almost pulpy in the way that it tastes. Uh, I, my, my palate was being tricked into feeling like I should be chewing on it. And it's not that the texture was so thick or anything. It was that the impression of the uh, fruit character was so strong that it was almost confusing to feel like I was not actually chewing on juicy fruit bits. Um, he crushed it. The, uh, it's very clear to me that the um, brewing practices he, use, he uses for uh, incorporating hops into these beers are pulling out the best of any hop varietal we stick in there. 
and uh, I doubted him and I was completely wrong. So I'm on record on video saying this, that Kenny, I was wrong. I'm sorry, dad hat is delicious. Uh, and I have been enjoying more dad hat at home probably than any of our beers that I've just drank on my free time than any other beer we've done in a while. That's true. That is true. <laughs> I'll clip that section out and forward it over just to make sure he gets to see that. Good. Thank you. Yes. Brennan drank all of our dad had at home. I don't. I can't get any because he drank all of it, our whole allotment of that beer. Um, Fortunately, we have some in front of us right now. So we yes, we do. Enjoy your little pour of dad hat here. Yeah, the warrior comes through amazing, though. And I mean, you pair anything with citra and it's going to taste good. So you can definitely tell, tell that there's citra in this beer. I get a little bit of pineapple and mango, and it's a nice kind of citrus fruit flavor that comes through. For me, everybody's palate's different. It's a fruity citrus bomb. It really is. I mean, Centennial comes through as, in my opinion, nondescript citrus juice when you use it in the Whirlpool. We Whirlpool with Centennial a lot to kind of amp the juice character of the other hops that we put in here. But when Kenny said he was putting Centennial in the dry hop, uh, alongside Warrior in the dry hop, that's when I was like, oh no, what are we doing? Everything's going wrong. What have I done? And I was wrong. So there, it's out there. Hey man, a lot of those, a lot of those great IPAs that dragged people kicking and screaming from light beer into craft beer were born on beautiful blends of Warrior and Centennial. So I, I agree. Think it's an excellent thing to go back to. I personally, as a beer drinker, would love to see the day where there are more of those hops used again. Um, that said, you guys killed it. That's a great beer, uh, and I think that you now have an opportunity to. Put more faith in your brewer. I think we're going to have an entire dad series and we'll have nice. dad shoes, we'll have dad socks, we'll have dad everything at this point. We're gonna outfit dad. So we also priced out getting dad hats, the same hat, and then printing dad hat on them and then putting like true respite on the side or something. But we haven't been convinced whether or not they would sell. So if anybody wants a dad hat, let us know. Yeah, throw some thumbs up down in that uh, comment section if you'd like one of those. Yes, we're, we're still playing around with that idea. Maybe for, I don't know. I mean, Father's Every Day is coming up. I know, there I was going to say Father's Day, but we don't, we'll see what happens. You can still buy a dad hat. After hearing the great story, uh, Alejandro says that he's very happy he got some dad hat. And, uh, I'm happy you got some dad hat, Alejandro. I'm going to give a couple shout outs to a few people that have joined us. We've got uh, Ryan Wagner on, I'd like to say hi to him um he's a great great beer mind in baltimore we're uh, very appreciative that he joined us we've also got one of our other uh good friends keith walcott on and uh if you guys are not familiar with him he's a great guy involved with glassware um and they're a supporter of bam so uh that's great and i guess i didn't give ryan a shout out he's with guinness so it's great to have him on board uh saying hi to everyone all right i'm gonna kick it back over to nick and uh we'll chat about the last beer I think that you have, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so kind of unfortunately, we're, we're kind of winging it and, and uh, figuring it, figuring out how to get through all this crap. But, uh, one of the things that we had in mind coming up once everything hit was this East Coast, West Coast mixed uh, four-pack idea. And I'm not saying we've come up with this idea all by ourselves. Other breweries have done this before. But uh, our, our take on it was having – East Coast, uh, be a, and it's both of them are a wrestling theme, uh, be a, a John Cena um, hazy IPA with El Dorado and Galaxy Hops. And, if, and if so in the four pack would be two of those. And then the same four pack would be your West Coast beer, which is Ric Flair, with kind of some dad hat hops, Amarillo, uh, Columbus, and Simcoe, even though they're pretty nice old, old uh, hops there which uh, still should be used a lot. But we wanted, we wanted to see what a uh, IPA used to be because I think it's gotten forgotten. And, and I personally still think I prefer a West Coast IPA. I mean, that's what Hops Cat is. Um, I, I love this beer, don't get me wrong, but uh, I'm really looking forward to the West Coast, West Coast IPA coming out. It's, it's still uh, in the tanks currently uh, because the timing got kind of screwed up with the process and everything. Um, so we couldn't launch it at the same time. We just kind of needed to get the beer out there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pour this in our little fancy dancy IPA glass that everybody seems to like. Hey Nick, while you're pouring that, I just want to point out, I didn't notice in the artwork when I was looking earlier that uh, 
on that armband that says I love hops. It's actually got hops the cat head on there. That's awesome. Good detail. Yeah, so that that's another uh, Philip Pilgrim um, artwork. The guy's uh, doing some amazing stuff. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm really excited for you guys to see uh, the Dan's Jans artwork coming out. It's it's right now we just saw a sketch of it, but uh, once you put, once you drop some color in there, it's it's really going to pop. Um, so while I sip on this a little bit, um, oh another thing, they're both 8.2. Uh, we wanted to make um, both uh, double IP, same exact alcohol percentage. Um, they really kind of compare um, style for style versus hop um, instead of having more variables than needed. So. Um, this is out now the East Coast. So you can find them both Craft Cellar and uh, Beer Me. And uh, another shout out to what True Respite's done for everybody with that app. Um, but uh, West Coast will be out soon. We'll start dropping hints on that when uh, when we will have a better idea of the release date when we when we know it. Uh, in the meantime, while I'm sipping on this, I kind of want to show you guys our tap room a little bit. If you haven't been here yet, it's a little bit depressing right now because all the stools are up. Um, so it's, it's not going to be quite the same feel or the same vibe and the lights, all, we have string lights up there, they're off. But uh, we're trying to do a whole arcade thing here. We can see Galaga, Pac-Man behind me. We got uh, Bubble Hockey. That was my favorite game here until the basketball game arrived. That thing is awesome. But then uh, we got two big roll-up doors here, which are covered by drapes right now. Out front of that one. It's uh, 14 feet wide. We're actually going to pull, uh, pour a, a concrete patio out front so we can actually have an outdoor space, which we which we don't right now, which would be nice. Um, let's see, some of Jordan's keg stacks back there. Oh, let's see here. We got a, speaking of the Go Banana and Simpsons, we got a stand-up game there. Got a little uh, Galaga. I don't know if you can see. Um, TV's all over the place. You know, I, I know a lot of a lot of breweries' vibes are anti-TV, anti-games, and that's fine. Um, I, I enjoy going to that and kind of relaxing. But in this particular neighborhood, um, we really kind of um, enjoy watching the Ravens games and the Orioles games with our with our customers. And it's kind of our crowd um, here, so it's it's different than some breweries out there. But it's it's our neighborhood and it's our vibe. Um, and this whole time I've been talking, I haven't been drinking, which is a mistake. I think that's pretty cool. I, uh, we actually moved our offices from right down the road from you guys right, like, mm -hmm. right after you opened. So I didn't get a chance to uh, come out yet. So as soon as we're able to uh, make this happen, I can't wait to make my way out there and check out what you guys have going on. That's awesome, man. I look forward to it. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to start sipping on this while uh, I listen to what else True Respite's got going on. So Brendan and Bailey, uh, Ryan would like to know if you guys are delivering to Baltimore City is the first thing. The second thing is I want to give a shout out to Matt Humbert of Patent Brewing who jumped in the uh, chat also. So it's great to see him here. Thanks for joining us, Matt. And uh, I'll let you guys answer that question. Yes, yes. we're delivering to Baltimore City. Um, we've added out of MoCo deliveries. Um, we rotate through five different spots each week. So I forgive me if I'm wrong on which day is which, but I think it goes um, Tuesdays in Frederick, Wednesdays in DC, Thursdays around Baltimore, Fridays in uh, Howard County, and Saturdays like Anne Arundel, Annapolis-ish. So it's very clear to make sure that everyone knows that you're not going to Park Villers House and yet. We are not going to Park Villers House and yet. So we're trying to keep it within an hour radius of the brewery, uh, be sensible with our, our um, uh, gas spend and, and, and labor and all that, but we're, we're trying to keep everybody working and we're trying to keep um, as many people in the in the loop and in the fold and getting true rest of beer as, as would like during a time like this. So yeah. it's a delicate balance. Absolutely. And it's been, I mean, when, when Governor Hogan came on at like 11 a.m. last Monday, the 16th, and started talking about people crowding into bars and restaurants, our hearts kind of stopped. And we were like, what is that going to mean for us? What is that? What is that going to look like? How do we even manage without selling beer to consumers um, or selling beer on, for on-site consumption. But we had sat down with a, a good friend. The
-hmm. like, and then of course the, the checkout link was broken for the first like 30 minutes after we posted it. So people are like, wait a second, I can't order beer. It's not working. Um, let's talk about that. So I, I want to talk about two things before we hang up here. Um, what do we have like 15 minutes left? Yeah, we've got a couple minutes. All right, and I, Nick, I don't want to step on your toes. So if you want to jump in and grab and, and grab some of this time too, then please let us know. But there's there's two okay. big things we want to talk about. Uh, the first being what's next at True Respite, and the second being the story of Beer Me and where that's going. So can I pause real quick? Yes. Just so everybody who's watching doesn't freak out, Brendan and Bailey did switch positions. <laughs> Bailey's <laughs> computer was gonna die. We had to get near a plug, and then I sat down first. So I just I noticed it, and I was like, I don't want anybody to think they're uh, stroking out or anything. So thank you. <laughs> okay. So uh, first, let's talk about what's next at True Respite. Oh, and actually, I would love to introduce you to some of our staff who are working now and are here. Do it. So actually, let's start there. Uh, friends, Aaron, <laughs> Brandon is our taproom manager, uh, Kelly's a beer tender, and Sharon is our uh, lead packaging person and seller person. So all Everybody these, wears a lot of hats. So. We also call Kelly the arts department because she does our interior design and she, she decorates for holidays. She helps us get our uh, uh, Facebook events banners looking nice and she develops all of those. So. We have uh, uh, packaging, the arts department, and the tapper manager in-house right now. Everyone is preparing uh, the vans and the, and the vehicles to go out for um, home deliveries through Beer Me, which is something we want to talk about. So, um, but first, I want to talk a little bit about what's next at True Respite. So last summer on July 3rd, uh, we had our biggest retail day ever. And the reason for that was we released- is it not true anymore? I don't know if it's true anymore. It was our biggest at the time. At the time yeah. yeah. And the reason for that was we, we, we released a beer called Fruit Crushers. Fruit Crushers was a, a fruited sour ale that we brewed with gushers, like the little kids candy snack things as an ingredient. And, uh, and it was a massive, overwhelming success. People were so excited about it. I, I saw a post that beer traveled all over the country. People were excited to share it and trade it and everything. And um, we had never brought it back, but considering the circumstances now, uh, we decided there was never a better time to bring fruit crushers back than uh, now while things are kind of slow. And so uh, we would like to reinvigorate that same sort of energy that we saw from folks last time we did this. And so fruit crushers um, was brewed two days ago. It soured in the kettle uh, for 48 hours and was collected into a fermenter today. We're brewing two different variants this time. So we have our uh, fruit crushers, the uh, base beer that we did last time with pineapple, mango, and tangerine. We are also doing a very berry variant of fruit crushers, which will be blueberry, blackberry, and raspberry. So we have a berry fruit crushers, berry berry fruit crushers, and we have fruit crushers. Those will be ready in three weeks-ish. Um, they're just got on yeast today. Um, we're trying some new techniques with the gushers to make sure that they show up. Yeah, so the first batch of gushers went in today. Um, and we did the gushers, we put them in in the boil. That's what we did last time. Um, but this time, in addition to putting in the gushers in the boil, we're also putting gushers in the fermenter because we want to make sure that there's no question that there's gushers in the beer. Are gushers mm -hmm. vegan friendly? Yes, they are. That's awesome. I think this beer, is it going to have lactose? The beer does have lactose. Okay. Yeah, so it's a fruited sour with lactose. So I not a vegan. Gushers gelatin was a, a vegan friendly food, so that's cool. They're not using gelatin. Um, I can't remember what the name of the stuff that they use is. We looked up all the ingredients to make that's sure awesome. it wasn't going to do terrible things to our yeast. Many times, yes. <laughs> yes. It's not actually gelatin, so. All right, a couple shout outs real quick. Ryan Yearden with uh, Harper's Ferry Brewing says, what's up? Letting us know that he's checking in from Virginia. Yeah. We also have uh, Zach Rasmiller from uh, 1623 on. He said hello. Hello. What's up, Zach? Hello. Okay, so uh, that's what's coming up. That's cool. We also have a collab with um, Firm Brewing Company, who is not open yet. They're opening in Annapolis. Uh, we brewed a hazy IPA collab with them. That'll be canned next week. It's called First Pitch, spelled with a P-H-E for Firm. Um, yeah, it was kind of a baseball reference because it was going to come out around opening day 
now that's changed a little bit, but we're all ready for baseball. So it's still kind of got that theme backbone. It was a double entendre too, because it's their first pitch of yeast. The only beer they've ever done. This is firm's first beer. So um, first pitch for baseball season and for uh, firm's first yeast pitch. Um, Whitetail's coming back. Uh, Week away is coming back. We sold out of that miraculously over the past like two weeks. There was a huge rush on on week away when um, everything hit the fan. So that was that was encouraging to see, honestly. And we'll we'll have some of that back in can shortly. And then um, Nick, I'd like to get your engagement here, talking about Beer Me a little bit. So I'm gonna tell tell people what the platform is, and then rather than us talking about our own experience with the platform we developed, I'd really like to hear you talk about your experience as a brewery that signed up to use it. If that's all right with you. Absolutely. Cool. So we'll do the introduction for Beer Me here. So Beer Me is a, a, an online marketplace we developed um, Friday, what's that, March 14th? Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, we saw the writing on the wall as uh, everything was going down in Italy and we were starting to follow their curve. And it was like we had a, a crystal ball looking ahead at what was going to happen. And we have very much followed in their footsteps um, through most of this process. So. It's unfortunate, obviously, the situation that is over there. But from a business perspective, it was at least fortunate that we had a small glimpse into the future to kind of prepare ourselves for what was coming here. Um, we recognized right away that bar, the bar and restaurant and on-premise model was probably not going to last for long. And one of our investors and, and a, a co-owner in the business, his name is Brian O'Connor, who is the best man in our wedding. I've been best friends with him since we were five years old. I trust him deeply. He is an incredibly talented man uh, with a keyboard and a mouse. And he came to me and said, listen, it's time to prepare for the direct to consumer delivery model. And he come to us with this before and being outside the industry, it was easy to be dismissive and say, you don't understand the laws don't work like that. That's just not how this goes. I don't want to risk losing our license, yada, 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 all the right answers. Uh, but this time he said, dude, it's time. And Bailey, Kenny, and I considered that, and we looked at the severity of the situation approaching us, and we agreed that uh, we had probably reached the moment where it was going to be either ask for forgiveness or die. Um, and we pictured it being where there would be plenty of breweries who decided to follow the rules and would suffer the consequences. There would be breweries who decided to go alone and, and fight to keep their license after it was over, live to fight another day. And we had hoped that the government would step up and make these things legal so that um, businesses could continue to keep their doors open during an unprecedented crisis like this. We figured it must be that breweries would be permitted to do this because how else would these businesses survive? And as we've mentioned, the, we're, we have built ourselves so deeply entwined into our local communities, not just economically, but as sports centers and, and places where people go for respite, for rest. Right, how many, I mean, I think a lot of the breweries that exist is, exist because they wanted to build a community center. That's part of why we exist is because we wanted to build a place where people could come and experience respite and take a break from the stressors of daily life and share beer together. That's so important and intertwined with this industry overall. So we looked ahead at this and said, okay, it's coming. And we gave Brian full go. We said, start, start developing the platform where true respite can begin um, managing orders and deliveries for delivery straight to people's homes. And for 19 straight hours, starting at 9 a.m. Saturday morning, he sat in front of his computer and pounded it away to develop some rough draft version of an early concept of what Beer Me would become. Um, it's worth noting that he has six month old twin boys. So he, he, yeah, his wife had a big hand in this too. She's amazing. Yeah, she's been out, you know, bringing him food in his little cave where he's been pounding away on the keyboard, um, developing features. He is the only developer. He is completely unpaid. And as we were developing this platform, we began to realize what incredibly, what an incredibly powerful tool that this will be for other breweries who are also going to be in a fight for survival. And it just felt like our civic duty to make sure that other breweries had access to this power as well. So we decided to make it free for all breweries anywhere to sign up for this platform and also begin taking online orders for curbside pickup and for home delivery 
and uh, the breweries have the option to choose which of those two they enable on their website. You can do one or the other or both. And um, so far, we've had 132 breweries across the country and in Canada um, make accounts. And we have dozens of those. I don't know how many are actively operating. Um, since we went live on Monday last week, BeerMe has processed over 1,000 orders for beer. I, I'm certain we're in the tens of thousands of dollars of business, if not dozens of tens of thousands of dollars. I'll have to get that um, number. But in just you know 10 short days, we have been able to create a platform that is allowing breweries to make up a lot of that slack lost when our tap rooms were shut down. So Nick, if you want to talk a little bit about your experience using the platform and brutal honesty is completely appreciated. I'm good to go. Good to right, go. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I, so I don't think it could be minimized um, how, geez, I don't know, I'm going to kind of call you guys saints, I'm going to call you guys heroes. Um, I don't think it'd be minimized. The fact that they're making this free for other breweries to use currently while we go through this um, is, is unbelievable. I, I think there's a lot of lesser people out there that may have came up with this app and kept it to themselves and they would have had complete uh, of right to do so i mean it was it was them they made it it's theirs they could they could do it and succeed and and uh take advantage of the of a failing market but that's not that's not what happened here uh these guys you know like you said it's it's all over the country it's, it's in canada i didn't know that that's amazing um and it's it really is a lifeline for a lot of breweries that may not have any other source of income um besides maybe some people trickling into the tap room but you know, this really helps get into a whole nother uh, consumer base and, and market that you wouldn't have touched on otherwise. Um, on the app itself, I mean, on our end, the back end, extremely easy to use. Um, looking at it from the consumer end, extremely easy to use. Um, it's just, if you, if you are watching this and you haven't used it yet, go on there, check it out, order some beer, if not by us, by somebody local, and, uh, and have some fun with it because it, it really is just an incredible tool and it, it's, it's, you know, one of those things that it's kind of, you know, meant to be almost, it feels like um, it happened at the, at the craziest time and it's, it's really saving a lot of people. Um, I was just talking to Dan on the side a little bit too. We're going to start adding more crowlers on there. Crowlers right now, you'll probably see some articles about it, are completely sold out pretty much everywhere. And we're, we're down to our last few, but there's some other options out there. We do have these um, from Stout Beverage Group, uh, these little one-time use of uh, red cap sealable crowlers and growlers. So we're going to start using those for a little bit until we can get our crowler machine up and running. And actually one of the ones I'm going to add immediately after this is a mixed drink beer cocktail that we came up with called Don't Touch Your Face. And it's a hot <laughs> okay. with uh, Jameson, um, lemon juice, and simple syrup. And actually that's what I'm sipping on right now. But yeah, I mean, I, I just can't say enough how incredible it is um, what they've done um, so we're having fun with it. We just started a few days ago and, uh, you know, it, it really is, it's a lifeline for us. And it's, it's, uh, you know, I think honestly, it's going to be a big part of how we make it through this. If, you know, if we, if we make it through this, I think it's, we're going to look back and, and realize that beer me had a, had a, uh, you know, big chunk of that. So, yeah, I mean, I want to, I want to say in front of everybody else, thanks guys for everybody. Okay. I am, uh, I'm not giving this as an official endorsement of the Brewers Association of Maryland, but my personal endorsement is that Beer Me is excellent. I was able to use it earlier this week to order beer from True Respite, and uh, it was flawless. Everything worked very well. Um, it's an amazing portal for the consumer to be able to connect directly to their favorite brewery throughout the state. Uh, despite the fact that there are some limited radii of delivery, uh, if there's a brewery near you and you're looking for an easy way to uh, catch up with them and place your order it's a it's a great tool and uh i have to say hats off to you for uh making this available to everybody in our in our industry and in our community because it's it's huge and i don't think like nick said that your your value that you're adding to your colleagues can be understated in any way uh, i mean that's obviously tremendous to hear that's how we intended it but I mean, customer testimonials, both as, as consumers and as brewers, is obviously the most important thing. So if it's working for you guys and it's working for us, um, I do know that there are going to be some feature upgrades. So Brian continues to be the only developer. 
um, he is continuing to pound away in his little uh, coder cave and his wife is continuing to be a patient saint as well. Um, I know that uh, some search features are going to be added shortly to the front page so that people can type in their zip code and see who delivers to them and what pickup is um, available within a certain radius. So hopefully searching for breweries that are on the platform and available for you will become easier for consumers. Um, we're making some changes on the back end and now does route optimization. So it tells you what order to make your deliveries in when you click a single button. I mean, the incredible work, his name is Brian O'Connor. He's worked for Siemens, he's worked for Microsoft, he's worked for Deloitte, he's worked for all these incredible companies. Um, and he's drawn from his experience at all of them to put together what I think has just been a masterclass in um, creating a, a user-friendly platform that is a meeting an immediate need and in a crisis. I mean, the fact that he was able to get us live from Saturday morning at 9 a.m. to Monday at noon um, has just been phenomenal. And I, you know, hats off goes to him. He's really the hero here. Absolutely. And Jessica, his wife. And his wife for taking care of the twin six month old boys while he's buried in his computer here. But um, the impact that he has made personally, um, he continues to be active in customer support, taking phone calls, responding to emails. I mean, he is the know it all, do it all behind this. So uh, we're just giving a lot of guidance on what features need to exist and how to implement them. But now that he's got so many folks on, on the platform, um, he's getting a lot of that feedback from others. So our role here is diminishing actually. And, and really we're just letting it go and uh, see what happens and hope we can help as many breweries come out the other end as possible. Right, that's kind of what we want to do. We want to spread the word. We want to share this with people and say, hey, there's this platform. You are welcome to use it. It's free right now. We're not charging anyone. We just want to see, I mean, for us, it's helping us get our employees working. You know, I mean, we don't have a tap room. We didn't know what that was going to look like, but now we can, add work hours for people and, and get our employees working and we want other businesses to be able to do that too get people working um and move beer right like that's what we all need to do we've all got beer we've been brewing beer to meet the demands of having a tap room and now we've got a lot of beer to move so we just want to see the industry keep going keep employing people keep moving beer um and so if anybody's interested in beer me please reach out to us um, and yeah, spread the word, let people know, like the platform's here and we want people to be able to use it. So I'm going to start to wrap things up here. I have one question for Nick that came in. I don't know if Marcy is still with us or not, but she asked a few minutes ago. Uh, she'd like to know if you know of any locations in the Rockville area where full tilt spear is also available. Uh, off the top of my head, I'm not sure. Um, we, I mean, that's, that's an area we've, we've considered opening up through beer me honestly um but off the top of my head i'd have to look into it um well she asked over on your facebook page too so if well, one we'll of your staff her. one of your staff can get back to her i'm sure she would appreciate that no problem um and the only other comment that i wanted to make before we wrapped everything else up was that if you just tuned in uh we've been talking a lot about uh beer me and delivery options uh maryland's breweries right now as we're all navigating this uh voluntary stay in place order kind of deal are legally able to deliver beer to you if they choose uh, beer me is a great option contact your favorite local brewery to see how they're offering their sale uh, they are open for carry out across the state delivery uh, is an option and like i said before there are great retailers that support the craft beer industry here in the state uh, so look for your favorites on those shelves if you happen to be in those stores um, the only other point that I was going to make is that when we do come out of the other end of this, we don't know how uh, we're going to shape all of this up. How is it going to go back to normal where everybody just comes into the tasting room and how long will that take? So be cognizant of that and you know, please find ways to support your uh, local breweries. Now they have a lot on the line. They employ your neighbors uh, and this is a community effort. So uh, lots of love to everybody that was on today and for everybody that's watching, we really appreciate all of the support. You guys have anything else? Uh, yeah, just real quick. Um, you guys talked about your your uh, Gushers beer. I, I want I want to say we gotta. And you were speaking about trades. We gotta do a trade because one of those four Dan Jams, Dan Jams, um, one of the four is gonna be trolley sour gummy worm variation. So yeah. if, if, you know, if we can swap a couple uh, for you guys or with you guys. Sounds I, I great. Yeah. 
Sounds like we're going to have a candy beer tasting. I would like to be invited to that party. Yeah, but one more thing, and then uh, I'll let uh, let the rest of close it out because they are the real uh, heroes right now. Um, thanks to everybody for your support, uh, especially the people that are local to us and walking in here and, and just really keeping us alive for a little bit and during an during a otherwise very depressing time. Um, it's, it's incredible that we are still able to employ uh, – our, uh, our employees. Um, so that, that means the most of us. You know, the, the reason we're here is because of our employees, because of the sacrifices they make, uh, especially lately, and uh, because of our neighbors. Um, check out Beer Me. Um, we are available um, for delivery and pickup. Pickup hours are between 3 and 7 on weekdays, 12 and 4 on weekends. And uh, we're constantly expanding the zip codes for delivery as we figure out what we can handle. Um, but, uh, yeah, thanks again for tuning in, and uh, thanks for the respite for what you guys have done. I look forward to seeing you guys on the flip side. Come check our tapper map when you can. Bailey, Brendan, you guys have anything else? I want to say thank you to everyone for continuing to support us. These are strange, strange times. Um, and every single four-pack we sell or every single prowler we sell for pickup or for delivery, it doesn't matter, it all tremendously – makes a huge impact for us right now, especially for our staff who we're trying to keep as busy as possible. Um, so. And not just for us, for all of the breweries in Maryland. So whatever your local brewery is, like it, anything helps really. So drink local, drink Maryland beer. There's a lot of really good beer in this state. And Marcy, if you didn't see the comments over here, Dan just let us know that both Brewbelly and Downtown Crown are places to check out for Full Tilt Beer in uh, Rockville. So with that, I want to thank everybody for spending your Friday afternoon with us. Cheers to Maryland Beer, and uh, we'll catch you all soon. Cheers. <laughs>